sorry. I was so worried about the clock. <laughs> Well, thank you for a great day today. We had uh, five characteristic or focus groups. Uh, I'm going to give you some of this information so you don't have to write it down, but uh, five groups. We had 80 participants that showed up in those five groups, so great information. And even more exciting, your online survey. Somebody take a quick guess. Who do, how many do you think? Mark, I'll, I'm going to call on you because I know you. How many do you think? 80. 647. Wow. So congratulations to your community and to your network. So that's the first thing I would like to review with you is the online survey. Uh, I'd like you to look at all of that closely. And then when we looked on the focus groups today, I'd like to have a conversation on how close you think those two documents matched up and then how you believe as a board, uh, does it address some of the things that you think are important. So that's our process right now. I've only had one district that's had more than 647, and the only reason this was, and this was an abbreviated, I was just absolutely amazed, you know, how short we had this open, and how many folks that we had, so just wonderful. Yep. About engagement in the district. Yes, that's what I heard, and I, I, I truly believe that after you today's you work. Dana. <laughs> Go ahead and take it personally. If you I, like. will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right, so I'd like to go over this page by page. Uh, you know, you had 647 people uh, respond. That doesn't mean they answered every question. You know, there were some questions, some skipped. But the first page is real simple. It's just simply who the people are that have, uh, have done this survey. So as you can see, the largest number, so almost 35% of the total were people that identified as a teacher within your district. And then you can see the second highest number was somebody that identified as an employee. So that could be a classified staff member, uh, most likely would be out. So if you added those two, you can see a, a, a wonderful percent of staff. And then you can see with 107 was somebody identified as a community member. So that makes a lot of sense. And then closely behind was parent or guard, guardian. I'll try to make a point here since I've done a lot of these, you know, things that might look different than typical. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong, but usually parents have a little bit higher response to that. It's not right or wrong. It's just what I'm observing here. So, all right, so if you want to, question two, how long have you been associated with the community or the school district? And this almost reflected what uh, typically happens but your highest percent of respondents claim to have lived in your district for 20 plus years. That's always the number one. You would think they've been here the longest, they're the most effective within your community. So, but what's interesting, then you had a, a quick, a, usually it goes by years, it's just one, two, three. Yours is slightly different, but so similar, it's probably not quite, but you notice number two and three is a little bit different than going by the experience. Nothing bad. So question three is relates to question one of which I'll review what we did the focus group. So this is the identified personal qualities that you would like to see in your new superintendent. 
So that graph is hard to read, but if you go to the next page, you can see how each one of those were rated. And if you didn't do the survey, what I want to remind you is that they were supposed to rank order these in priority. So what was most important to what was the lowest under their priority range. So if you look on the far right, you'll see a power score. And unfortunately, those are not in order. And that is, we have a very new employee that just started last week, so uh, I'm amazed that she even knew how to put this together for us. But usually they're in order, so you'll have to kind of play around with that a little bit. But I have written those down, so it's a little bit easier for you to see that the first priority with the high power score of 598 was a kid's first personality. So honestly, that's not really unusual. That's usually number one or two almost everywhere I go. The second one, which is far all the way down with the 5.68, is personal strength to do what's right regardless of the circumstance. That's usually pretty high also. And then lastly, with the power score of 532, is being approachable, being accessible. So those first three there, I want you to keep in your mind and how those may or may not match to what I heard today. That would be some of our conversation. Now, that power score, I've, I've talked to our computer expert researcher. He gave me some big words on how that power score is put together. But just because you may have a power score, let's say that 598 is first, doesn't necessarily mean that that was the first priority of ever. But if you see your second response, actually had 33% had personal strength to do what's right as their number one, but your highest priority or highest power score of 598, its first personality was only 29%. Do you see how that's working? So it's based upon somehow a distribution of all of those. So I just highlighted the first three for me because those kind of stood out. You know, the next one is 448, so that's really kind of down from your number three. It doesn't mean it's not important, and it may be more important to you than it is to this group. So I guess I'll ask the board right now with those first three. Do any of those responses surprise you? Do you think that might be different than what you as a board is looking for as a whole? Uh, that any conversation you want to have, I would be happy to make notes to myself, or you might simply say, you know what, that's pretty darn close to what I was thinking. survey because if you just let everybody write whatever term, it's really hard if you don't write the same term. It's hard to either. So we put down the things that we hear that are common. Today's, they get to use whatever words they want to use, you know, and then I group them to the best of my ability. So um, there may be words like you said that might be connected to this, but it's not the exact same. Yeah. So. And I think What's nice about the prioritization, it does give us some direction when we're uh, calling down the All right, so we go to the next question, which is the leadership quality. So I want you to be aware that these first two questions, question three and four, either relate to question one that was asked today. They were asking combinations. So these are the leadership qualities they'd like to see in their next superintendent. So you can see the graph and how that's put together. The next page is the actual uh, results so you can see. Proactive, forward thinker uh, was first with a 5.6 power score. 
second was understands and recognizes diversity within the district. So you can see those were the only ratings that had a power score over five. And actually the ones on the previous page were all pretty much higher than what you see here. So once again, one was a proactive forward thinker. Two was understanding and recognizes diversity within the district. And then I'll let you look at the others. But uh, while you're looking, uh, please contemplate once again, do those top responses match what you believe is important I think you're going to see diversity really big in the physical world. Any surprises? Anything that you would wish to add? I'll just point out that I think one that's really close to a five there is community coordinator. I think, you know, I think the superintendent is one of the most important positions in our community uh, and to connect with the community. And I appreciate you saying that because I think you'll see a connection with some of the questions today. And I will tell you now that that, that was really big here because I think people believe there is a good connection with the school district and the community entities. And it wasn't just one group that believes that, all five of them that came up did. So if I would say something that's different than what I'm used to hearing, that was. Not that some don't believe in it, but your data demonstrated that in every group like that was something that really works well here. And even the community the group, the last group I met was I guess we could say community leaders, I think. Um, they believe the school system is really important for them. It's been a good step towards working with them. Uh, the next question is the identified experiences of a superintendent. So you can see the graph, not too much help to us. But if you go on and look at the results, you can see nothing's over a five. Interesting. Doesn't mean they're not important, but the first priority with a 498 power score is experience with diverse race demographics. So you can almost relate that back to the last, one of the last high responses that we had. Then number two is experience with diverse socioeconomic demographics, which you also, I, well, I better not tell you what you're going to see. I'm going to let you decide what you're going to see. But I think you'll notice that there's a connection. And then number three is previous superintendent experience. Surprises on these top responses? But uh, interesting to note that the lowest one was previous experience within our district. There were comments related to that either one way or the other today. I mean, you'll have to make your own judgments because I didn't really pry a whole lot because I didn't want somebody to start saying we want so and so to apply or somebody not to apply. But there was a lot of comments that related that we want somebody that really uh, understands our district already, you know, things like that, or, or some that actually says it would be nice to build a house or a home on top of the street. So a lot of different things. Okay. Any other comments on that? It's just very notable, I think, that, that the last two were very relatively low and comparable. Experience with political advocacy and then previous experience with consulting. Uh, I had an observer with me today. <laughs> She made a comment which is right on track. Experience with business and operations of school district, which typically leads to budget experience, not high here. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, your superintendent also has to understand you have people that do that. You know, the smaller the district's the superintendent is doing that, so it seems to be higher on the list. <coughs> So now, uh, we redacted 
printed some. I have this copy, which I can hand to you later, that is not redacted, but just like me, if I want to come in and complain about an employee, you wouldn't let me do that. So since this is in a public setting, we've redacted. Uh, I can give you mine afterwards, so the black comments are, because they are your comments, but I just want to make very conscious to protect your employees. That's not good. It's, it's common. We don't do that. Right. Now, as you can see, you only had 430 people make comments. You know, I've gone through there. You know, the comments are important to your public, and they're important to you. Uh, but I could read through there and probably not make sense of what it would to you folks because you understand the comments probably better than I would. So I do ask that you look through those and make some judgments about that. If there's something I would also want to know about it, come up through there. Very typical. I don't want you to think, oh, my gosh, look at the bad comments. This is their opportunity. So question seven, which is the single quality or characteristic that will separate one good candidate from another. So this would be question four that was asked on site. So as you can see, uh, the first response with 160 of the 495, they could only write one response or pick one of these. They wrote honest, trustworthy, strong integrity. So the basic human qualities that we all hope our children are, are uh, developed. That is always number one. Always. So that's not a surprise to me. Number two is a kid's first student-centered leader. So you can see a pretty big jump. So from 160 foot, uh, you know, the human characteristics is number two, 90. So you had 90 people that chose a kid's first student-centered leader. And then if you keep moving down, you can see it really goes down from there. So there's, I think the next one is with 47, a positive personnel support and development. So this one's always has a big gap between number one and number two. And I think what most of us understand is either employees or employers, that if you can hire a good, honest person of integrity, uh, they can learn to do the work that's needed. But I think you'll find that today that wasn't as big. That number one either was probably not as big in the face to face as you can see it on camera. So, Mrs. Stanley, uh, I guess the board would like to talk and I can listen, or you say, no, we don't need to talk about this anymore. But what I guess what I'd like to know from what you see, and I know you haven't looked at the comments, but of the questions that they had to prioritize. Anything that you would say, I cannot believe this, dear, we really want this to be looked at, or you feel pretty comfortable as a board that your opinions match what the survey said. So you're, you're asking sort of a family feud question here. Would you <laughs> sort of yeah. Well, I don't want, yeah, I, well, yes. Uh, you know, at least when we went through each of the questions, I mostly heard, well, that kind of surprised me, but, you know, this is probably the way we all feel, that sort of thing. Or, I cannot believe budget wasn't higher. As a board, we think that should be a lot higher. Well, I want to know that. You know, if there was something that did not come to the forefront that you as a board think should, I want to know. Yes. And our teachers are showing 
you are listening, but you can't uh, respond to a thousand people because they all want a thousand different things. So right. you're having to make very difficult decisions on what you see the best solution to take. But their input is very valuable and it's very valuable in this process. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm kind of curious, Gary, because you are uh, uh, all of your activity uh, along these lines of design and school <coughs> it, it almost doesn't surprise me the level of involvement, only because of the community I think I know, but, but we're coming out of COVID and, and that sort of an environment where people are really wanting to engage and, um, and, and be a part and express their opinions. And, and so this to me is consistent with all of that. The online survey has become very popular, especially since the pandemic. Uh, so providing them this opportunity. Stanley, are you ready for me to keep moving on? I think so, unless, unless there's anybody else have any other comments. So let's talk about what happened today. Let's review, as you can see, the very first thing that we have here uh, is the number that participated in each of the groups. So we had uh, 15 staff members, 17 principals, 20 district office staff, 13 patrons and parents, and 15 community partners for a total of 80. They were highly engaged, they were, fun, they were a fun group. I've told some of them that this is my funnest day of a superintendent service, so it's all downhill from here. Uh, but the fun day is to get to meet with folks and have fun with them and listen to what they say and, and uh, get it recorded for your information. So as I said, the first two questions where we asked for some sort of response are question one here. We just ask it in the same manner. But describe the most important leadership and personal quality you'd like to see in your new superintendent. When you see a tally mark on the first three questions, that tally is a comes from a group of individuals, not an individual. So I put them in groups of three or four. I think we might have had a group of two or five. But what I asked, rather than having 20 people just throwing things at me, I want them to come to consensus. So it's the really important stuff. And then they had to, then I gave them a finite, maybe only to give you two or three responses on this, you have to come to an agreement. So a tally on the first two questions, once again, is a group response, not an individual. So on the most important leadership and personal qualities, you can see uh, the most was something to do with communication. Now, I will be the first one to tell you if I had 24 hours to put all this together, it may look a little different. Because, you know, I'm trying to put words that in my mind seem to be grouped together. So I, I want you to know it's not perfect science on what you're seeing right now. Uh, you may do it different if you were doing it. But I put listener, transparency, communication, uh, that sort of thing in usually the same and it's, uh, those are really small tally marks, but you can see there's only, that was your number one. I'll let you count. John, you got a good amount of eyes to count those? <laughs> so what's interesting is your second one, you know an approachable personal might have something to, be, to do with communication. I did keep them separate. But as you can see, that was your second most. If for some reason some of you thought they should be up there with communication, you can see that it really gets to be a big group. But I did keep those separately because approachable and personal were the actual words they used. So I put those together. So it looks like if you said 11, there must be maybe nine different groups actually said the word approachable or personal. And then remember the, the single trait that you asked to make the, the characteristics? That only came in third on this particular question. So I mean, obviously a good representation, but only that many groups said something about honesty and integrity. And it came up really early. I told them I was thinking about applying, but I immediately became uneligible to apply in the honesty and integrity class. <laughs> Then, as you can see, uh, 
working with diversity, experience working with diverse populations, ability to perform their duties with a lens of equity and inclusion, a cultural, under, a cultural understanding of our unique history. And you can see uh, it was a pretty good number, but uh, you know, obviously not your top number. So look through those before I ask you ready to speak. Look through those. Probably say, yeah, those look like good things, but in your opinions, looking at that question three and four, where does that match on the online survey that doesn't surprise you? I think the first thing that stands out to me is uh, I feel like on the online survey that the kids, student first, was kind of toward the top, it's kind of toward the bottom. Right. Yeah, it didn't, I mean, I heard that in some manner, but it really didn't stand out. I mean, I got a couple tallies. Now you got to remember a lot of times, because it's on the online, it's written there. It's something they choose here, they got to pull it out of their hat. You know? So it's sometimes hard. Well, the skilled trade care is above. The patients that they want to train is bottom. I think you'll see it in some other questions. So, yes. So, the top three, the two and then the top three are both those. So do it one right, being approachable seems to be consistent with both surveys. Ready to go to question two? All right. Question two is a fun question, we hope. Uh, the fun question is describe and list the good points of your district. Uh, and then I would say if I stop right there, I'd like to think you could list 100 things. But uh, what I want you to do is think about the best points and good things about your district that you want the new superintendent to understand and support. Two or three responses, please, per group. And then you can see with a huge number and actually tied, but this is where that community involvement, uh, community partner, said in many different ways, but just kept coming up. Uh, it looks kind of like a tie, if I could count those with your number two, and see how big that is. And it did show up on your online, but maybe not that high, but it was, it showed up in every meeting today. I mean, it wasn't just the community partner that mentioned it. It showed up in every meeting. So what I can say that really stands out in your district from the hundreds that I've done is community involvement, partnerships, how we collaboration with the community, different entities, and then your diversity, your number one and two here, really set these remarks apart from other districts that I've seen. There's a lot of commonalities from every district I've done, but there are some things that are always different, and it's the collaboration and the understanding of diversity is what is different in your district. Any comments based upon question number two? I'm glad they see that as strength. Yes, I, I think that's wonderful. Because they did see it as a strength. It wasn't, I mean, uh, not only the folks that were today, it was every group. It wasn't just the people that you thought would say it because they benefit from it. I mean, it was every, every group that saw it or sees it. innovation people are free to do the 
about the, the old app for trying something different and maybe it fails, you know, but you never get anywhere without failing first. So there seem to be, you know, I don't know how many, let's just say maybe there's 10 colleagues there, uh, but that was kind of interesting to see that that came up. That, and once again, that came from probably not as much as a community group because they wouldn't know that, but they were proud of what you do with your students. That they said, man, I think we, I don't know if it's said in here, but I hear people talking about we do a lot of really cool things we're pretty sure some other districts don't do, you know, around our area. So that was good news. All right, question three then is the opposite. Critical needs or challenges that you want the new superintendent to understand and address. And I'd say notice I didn't say fix. That needs to be addressed. This was interesting is in its it's not unusual, but it may not always be number one, but it has something to do with retention and recruiting of staff. And then if it had anything to do that might have something to do with recruitment and retention, I put it in there like staff morale, those types of things. I group those all together. So you can see a, a huge number of groups said something about that. Understanding what works for other districts does not necessarily work for us. We need to rebuild our institutional knowledge, a lack of continuity with district office and turnover. So I'll let you make that own judgment on what that might be. So where's the breaking point there between number one and number two? Yeah, uh, if you see understanding, and it's in lowercase, so understanding that what works for another district would be in the same heading with question four. This is the same as the very last question, question seven. And what that single trait is, you would hope the board would use to choose one candidate over another. And that, I actually put a little space there, Mark, so you can see the difference between one and two. The number one response is almost double what the number two. Now, I want you to know these tallies represent a single person, not a group now. So everybody had the opportunity to give one single response. Please do not count the tallies to see if there were 80 of them. <laughs> but theoretically, there should be 80 tallies there. If we're getting them. But as you can see, with a huge number, I can't count all of those, but at least two lines of tallies have something to do understanding our culture, our, our diversity, that sort of thing.
see there, there's a lot that's happening that just is not quite up here with number one. And then remember the personal traits that was number one, really big on your online? It only got, well, it tied for three, third, and honestly, pretty far down from number two. If you don't see a tally, it did get one. I just didn't put one on the online tally. So, do you, do you see any expected difference between a online survey where it's just out there, anonymous, and people staring at each other in the face in a focus group? Absolutely. And with the first three questions, they have to come to consensus on the response. And if there's four or five, I only give them one or two, somebody lost. I hate to say it that way, but somebody had to convince somebody that mine was important enough to say in your favorite question. A lot of com deep conversations today, I think you would agree watching that. There's not, not bad conversations, but some hard conversations that everybody was working hard in, in agreement that they wanted to come up with something. Unless you heard somebody argue, I've never heard, but there were some really deep conversations going on there. So any big ahas on this one and how it may relate to the online survey? I know there's some differences. I know there's some similarities. person to your community. I don't know that person's name, and I probably wouldn't tell you here, and I hope it's right. a very new uh, resident of your community. And I asked, are you familiar with those three districts? Is that him? Yeah, he said, building a culture, and here's three districts that I think have been able to do that. Okay. And he listed those three. But you don't know what he meant by that. You think they're just Just that help developing a culture with, you know, a, a, a culture within your community of learning and uh, uh, championship, not sports necessarily. I do remember that person that he was able to convince his whole group to come to the work group. It, it, it kind of seemed like in, in focus groups, there was this strong desire uh, of a qualified candidate uh, be very oriented, at least in concept, if not experience, in our community. And yet that didn't really rank high someone from within. So uh, I don't know if this is true. So hopefully this doesn't make the paper because I don't know what's going on. Your focus groups know your internal candidates. So they're going to be more likely to talk about your internal candidates. I didn't I never heard somebody say a name. But it was saying, you know, somebody here that already knows what we're doing, you know, that sort of thing. Your teachers know that did your online, but they're not thinking about a face because we don't give them those types of questions. relate to exactly what they want to say they have to pay for. You know, that's the closest statement that even comes close to what I want to say. Some of your comments, you might get a hint about that. I mean, obviously I read through every one of them. Some of them were pretty clear that we like somebody or we hope it's not this person or something like that. Mrs. Stanley, I'm going to give you the not redacted one. Okay. And then you can do with it what you want. Um, but if there is a request for permission, I would suggest you get it back to your okay. mind. Any other comments on the focus groups and or the online survey before we keep moving along? I'd just like to tell you thank you for oh, all your you hard work. And, uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's not hard work. It's this is the fun day. <laughs> this is the fun day. Not all of them are, but I get to meet a lot of fun people and you know just to hear about your district and get a free lunch out of it. That's not that's, doesn't happen too often. So, and you well know this, but I do want to thank Stephanie Hunt. As you well know, she was a high caliber uh, clerk. I would like to request on your agenda, I requested a, a, a executive session, and I don't think I need a whole lot of time, but uh, I do think it would be important that we talk about some items before we move any further. Madam President, I move we go into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss personnel matters pursuant to the non elected personnel exception under KOMA beginning at right away. Okay. Uh, 5 41 and the open meeting will resume if the board convene at 
All second. Okay. We've got to hurry. All in favor say aye. aye. aye.